All right, I'm, I'm going to make this video short because we have a lot of talented members here. Um, let me start off and say um, I'm from Puerto Rico, born San Sebastian. I came uh, to New York in the 50s where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in the projects on the west side. Always in the streets, playing baseball, but, you know, just living the life of a, of a teenager. Simple? It's yeah, very simple. I worked in the World Trade Center for 23 years. And I was there in spirit when it came down. When it came down, I was off work. I was home sleeping. And there was a commotion going on and my beeper and my telephone was going off and usually I just ignore it. I'm thinking it's my boss who wants to know how the night went. And I usually ignore it because I need my sleep. <laughs> anyway, I finally had to get up and, and see what was going on. I looked at my beeper. There was like 200 messages. I checked my cell phone, over 200 messages. I turned on the TV, and when I turned on the TV, it's when I saw the second plane hit the top, the twin tower, tower two. I went to tower one. I thought I was dreaming, but it was not a dream. But that, that day, I kept thinking, I'm going to get up from this nightmare. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because that when that happened, something here in my heart died too. I lost a lot of friends in Tower One, mostly the security. Because you know, security are the last ones out of the building. Anyway, when that happened, I moved to Arizona. I decided that I needed a change of life. I was uh, on the verge of getting divorced. My mom had passed away two months after that. I had custody of my 15-year-old son. So I needed to change my life. And when I came here, I had a coach shop. I couldn't find a restaurant. I couldn't find more phone. I didn't, I, I didn't know where the Puerto Ricans were. So I decided to hit the internet and I just put down, I just typed the word Puerto Rico in Arizona. And that's when I met Nidia. And this was back 2002. But I've been with the organization for about, since 2006. If it wasn't for them, I think I would have still been moving around. They are my family here. Nadia and Gretchen. So, when, when we first, when I first came into the organization, we did uh, the picnics, we did uh, the parada, and we had a lot of fun. We also hosted a Gran Combo. We did a fabulous job that night. But now, I think it's time to go to the next level. We need to help our Puerto Rican brothers and sisters. This is all has changed. It's fun to go party, enjoy coffee and stuff like that with, with each other. Now we have a lot of work. We need to be there for our Latino brothers and sisters, Puerto Ricans, Peruvian. We just have to lend a hand. 
Like I said, we have a lot of talent here. And if I'm not voted in, hey, I won't feel so bad. Because I know we have seven great members that's going to carry on. It's time to go to the next level, and that's to help our Puerto Rican community here in Arizona and in Puerto Rico. I think that's it. Escuchándole hablar y a, y a todos los que hasta el momento han hablado, quería a, hacer una breve intervención aquí porque el Puerto Rico que nosotros conocíamos a esta fecha, el año pasado, dejó de existir. Dejó de existir y ahora hay otro Puerto Rico. Y por eso es que nosotros necesitamos que cada uno de ustedes dé un poco más, demos un poco más para, para poner a ese Puerto Rico de nuevo en el lugar que estaba. Con candidatos como los que han precedido y los que vienen ahora, ustedes tienen la oportunidad de elegir aquellos que van a trabajar por ese Puerto Rico y por los puertorriqueños en Arizona. Nuestro, digo, esa es la ventaja de uno ser maestro de ceremonia, que puede decir lo que uno quiere. Ahora vamos a presentar a la próxima candidata, que es Leticia Jiménez. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Leticia Jiménez. I am Puerto Rican and Cuban. I'm a New York Rican. Um, I invested 25 years of my life in the United States Air Force. 16 years in the Mesa School District in computer and network support. I stayed in information systems for a long time and I got my degree in social work. I invested some of my Mesa School District time in helping youth, the Latino community, understand the importance of education. I saw families that were only earning $39,000, husband and wife, and these children were being raised to understand the importance of education. They were very passionate. I learned so much that low-income families work so hard to make sure that their children got an education. These children wanted to share their scholarship with the teachers that helped them. That brought tears to my eyes because they didn't understand that that money went directly to the school so that they can get an ed education. I invested three years of my internship through ASU working with YMCA Achievers Program, which taught children to go out and create new programs and um, making a difference in your community. And I worked with Westwood High School in Mesa, and we took these children out of this state to compete in other states, Tennessee and St. Louis, with their project and for the first time that they left their state, they came in second place. And they brought a project called Child Seat Safety. The Latino community in Mesa, when they were asked, where's your child the safest, they said in my arms, in a car. Child Seat Safety in Mesa was like below 40%. So we started educating, those children in those high schools started educating the Latino community and we got car seats for those parents. And that went up from 20% over 56% child seat safety. The importance of children's education in our Latino community is what I'm passionate about, but also the uh, importance of Puerto Rican history. We have to educate the Puerto Rican community because I'm a New York Rican. Yes, I went to school in Puerto Rico, but we, we, we still have to do a lot of homework in our children because they're either born here, born in New York, Chicago, anywhere East Coast, but do they know their culture? So I hope that I can bring that. Even if I don't get voted in, I'm going to work into educating about the Puerto Rican military veterans, our Medal of Honor winners, and publicize that as well. But to target 
our children and our youth and help them to research their culture and their background and hope to raise money. When I was working with the uh, YMCA Achievers Program, we just wanted $3,500. I got $92,000. We were able to compete in two different states. So with my knowledge with youth, activities, military, and my social work, I hope that I will be instrumental in your organization. Thank you. Hi, I'm so nervous. I'm not a good public speaker. Just gotta put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that brought me down a little bit. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me today. I, um, thank you for the opportunity to be able to be here to, to speak to you guys. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Puerto Rican on my father's side, American from my mother's side. But um, I was always, I was raised more around the Puerto Rican family. I'm from New York. On the East Coast, we have a very strong Latin community, Puerto Rican community. There's a lot of us there, you know, so our food is there, our culture is there, our people are there. Um, I was an administrative secretary for many years before I finally, um, I became sick and I had to give that up. So I stopped working and I decided, well, I'm gonna have to dedicate myself now. I, I'm home, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um, I served in my church um, as director for the youth. Um, doing that, I had to, um, you know, make all the agendas for the meetings. I had to serve on the church board. I had to um, plan all the activities for the kids. I have a very strong passion for young people. It's just something that's been put in me from young. Um, my father came from a very big family. I always wanted to have a very big family. I have five children. So, um, thank God. I have one, and the last one is 15. She's the youngest. Um, so, let's see. I also had to serve on the church board. I, I um, served as uh, on the church board, on the school board, um, as a parent. Um, can I tell you? I wrote my speech in Spanish because I, I, I said, I'm coming here to the Puerto Rican Junta, I should be able to speak Spanish to them, because I, but I speak more English than Spanish, so. Um, can I mix it up? That's right, because the Spanish works for me, because I'm a Puerto so that's what we do. Um, let's see. I took the, so I took the kids to you know to visit the young people. I took them to visit the elderly. We did a lot of park cleanups. I had to organize all of that, um, and that was really great. It was a wonderful experience. Um, let's see. I know that serving on the board, I know the responsibility that comes along with serving on the board because I've already had to do it twice through my church and through my church school. Um, it is a big responsibility. There's a lot of responsibility, but you do what you have to do and you step up, you know, and you help out wherever you can. And I hope that even though I'm not, even if I don't get elected to the board, I'd like to be able to do that. Please feel free to use me if I don't get elected. I'm, I'm available and I have free time. So if I can help you, I'll help you. It doesn't matter. Um, Siempre he tenido una fuerte amor para Puerto Rico. Uh, mi abuelita, ella nos metió eso muy para dentro de nosotros. Y la importancia de la familia. Uh, toda la vida yo quería caminar en los pasos de ella y ver a Puerto Rico sobre sus ojitos. Uh, fui a Puerto Rico por la primera vez cuando yo tenía como 42 años. No puedo explicar cómo me sentí. Um, salí de, de ese avión por primera vez. Era algo como un sentido de paz, algo que me, que me tocó el corazón tan y tan por dentro. <coughs> y el amor para mi gente y mi cultura ha crecido desde ese día. Es como un fuego que tengo por dentro. Um, quiero saber más de mis raíces, de mi cultura, de mi patria. Ese amor es lo que quiero compartir con nuestros jóvenes. Oí a alguien hablar de que querían empezar un grupo que se llama Los Bobby Caneers, de Code. Um, es un grupo de jóvenes que nosotros nos mandamos a Puerto Rico para que ellos conocen la isla y caminen en los, pa los pasos de sus antepasados. 
porque tanto no saben nada, tanto por igual en, en Nueva York, y yo sé que muchísimo no han ido a Puerto Rico, nunca han podido visitar. Um, es algo que, que los judíos lo hacen, ellos lo hacen, se llama un birthright trip. And um, the Jewish people do it, they send their kids there, um, it's a paid trip that they do for their, for their youth so that they can fall in love with where they're from, so that they can have something, have a connection to that land, want to be there, want to love it, want to do for it, want to help. When the votes come and they need to vote, they're ready. They have to go serve. You know, the ones that are, that are here, a lot of them have to go serve in the military there. Um, it's just something that I have in my heart that I feel like we're losing our young people. They don't even understand. They don't have that connection. And it's very sad to me. Um, it's just very different. It's very different. El sonido del coqui, if you never heard it, you gotta hear it. You have to see it at least once. You have to go there. You have to hear it. You have to feel it. I never saw mountains like that in my life. I lived upstate New York for a while. I grew up in the boroughs. I was born in Brooklyn. But when I went to Puerto Rico, and even after I lived upstate New York, there's nothing like the mountains in Puerto Rico. There's nothing like it. The green is different. And when I went back and I saw the, the mountains and they were brown, I just cried. I just cried. And after Hurricane Maria, I just cried. You know, and I cried for a long time because I can't believe my island was that destroyed. I just want to help wherever I'm needed. Um, whatever I can do to better the organization. I think they need us more now than ever. Our Puerto Rican people need to stand together. And that's about it. Um, yeah, we need to be, we need to bring our culture out. Um, we need to, they need to know who we are. Everybody here thinks that all the Latinos are Mexican. <laughs> and I get that, and I'm like, no, um, no, Puerto Rican, it's, it's different. You know, when I came here, we, I wanted to make pastel. I lived in Scottsdale when I first came here. Now, I was surprised. I lived in Scottsdale. There was no, I didn't see my people. I didn't see my food. I couldn't find a platano. I wanted to make pastel. I had to call the Puerto Rican Latin grill to find out where do you buy your guineos? How do you make, you know, where do you buy your guineos? And they told me Lili's Market. <laughs> so now I know, like, oh, okay. And I was able to make pastel. But I couldn't find Goya. I couldn't find anything. So now, you know, it's, it's better now, but, but we need to take that, yeah, we need to take that out there. We need to, we need to put, give our children those traditions and, and they need to see Puerto Rico. And I, that's something that, that's a passion for me. So however I can help, I'm at your service. Estamos viendo como cada puertorriqueño tiene su historia, ¿no? Tiene su, su forma de ver a Puerto Rico y su forma de ver el sitio donde está y cómo eso se proyecta hacia Puerto Rico. Así que queremos que, que nuestra organización tenga esa gama de, de distintas perspectivas para que cada uno desde la suya aporte a esta organización, al desarrollo, al crecimiento y al fortalecimiento de esta organización. Corresponde ahora a Marlabel Figueroa. Buenas tardes. Thank you for, for having me. Um, just like many of you, um, I'm, I'm new to Arizona, and I say new because most of my life, I, I obviously I was born in Puerto Rico, but I was born in Carolina, and then I came to the United States when I was 18 to go to college by myself. I didn't have no family, I didn't know nobody in this country, and um, it was scary. <laughs> it was really scary. Um, I didn't know many Puerto Ricans. Uh, most of the people I knew were either white or all black. Um, and it, it, it was very tough for me to, to, for my first few years to live in this country and have no support from anybody. Um, it was just me. Um, it was very lonely. Um, and then eventually I started to, to meet more people and I lived in the East Coast for a long time and I started to meet more people from Puerto Rico, people that were born in New York where the parents are from Puerto Rico. So it was, it was awesome for me to have that um, again and have some Puerto Rico in, uh, you know, near and close to me. Then, like this gentleman who spoke, and I apologize for say, um, September 11 happened, 
and I used to work in the towers. Um, it was a life-changing event for me as well. I lost some of my friends there. And at that point, I think something changed in me where I felt like my life needed a change. I was living in a rat race. Uh, I got to work, make money, pay the house, etc. And I decided that I was going to open my own business. And I want to step back. I had a really good paying job. Um, I was living a really good life for being in my 20s. I wasn't struggling financially. But something was missing in my life, and I always wanted to help people. And I said, you know what? I want to open my own business. Um, I used to work in a lot of nonprofit organizations with women that were, um, you know, they were in a situation of domestic violence and their children, et cetera. And I said, something that I can do to help women is to open a spa, a place where women can come. Um, they can bring their daughters as well, or their sons if they want to, and, and just be themselves, get pampered, not in a, I guess, superficial way, but just, just uh, have an environment where they feel safe and they can talk to other women and, and bring their daughters and they can you know, hang out together. So I did that for a few years. Uh, that was my baby. It was a, a lot of work. Uh, but throughout having the business, I met a lot of interesting people. It gave me the opportunity to be part of the Tuskegee Airmen of New York chapter. I worked with them uh, in a lot of different uh, events and programs that they had. They raised money for scholarship for, for young black kids so they can go to college or they can pay for school um, and get an education. I was a founding member, a member of a women's uh, and a girls organization, and the, uh, it was that was under um, the. Uh, sorry, I apologize. I'm a little nervous. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was an organization I was a founding member of, and part of that the organization purpose was to empower women that have gone through a tough time, either through a divorce, domestic violence, or they were in poverty, and sort of help them get a development uh, professionally, skills, um, and sort of give them a leg up, and also to give scholarship to young girls so they can become the future of tomorrow as well. So that was uh, very rewarding for me. I, I loved it and enjoy it. Um, but then it, again, I had that situation where I felt like there's something that is missing in my life I need to go on and, and move away from New York. This is a, my comfort zone. So I ended up in Arizona. I don't know why. <laughs> if you ask me this day, I, I just put my stuff in the back of my car and I just drove with my mom. And I remember my mom from Puerto Rico. I mean, Puerto Rico is like so small. And she's like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When are we getting there? And I said, mom, this is not Puerto Rico. This is a big country. And I remember passing through New Mexico, and there's a town named Montoya, and our, uh, Montoya, and our, our last name is Montoya. And I said to my mom, you know what? If you keep asking, where are we there yet? I'm going to drop you off here with your people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was um, it was exciting. It was new for me, but at the same time, it was scary because again, I was in this place where I was out of my comfort zone. I didn't have Puerto Rican someone around me. I didn't know anybody here, um, and. I was depressed for a long time, I'm going to be honest with you, because all I met, and even though I love Mexican people and I love people from other cultures, I, there was something missing in my life and I felt like, what am I doing here? I don't feel like I'm supported, I don't feel like I have people around me that, when I come here, for example, today, I love getting my hugs and my, my kisses and, and feel like there's warmth in the room, I just wasn't feeling that. And I moved to Florida for a while, and then I didn't like that either because I thought I was going to be closer to my home and just go to Puerto Rico all the time. And then my mom is like, you know what, you need to make a decision. You're like a gypsy. You're always moving from here to there to everywhere, and you're driving me crazy. So I moved back to Arizona. I ended up buying a house, and then obviously September 11th, I'm sorry, Maria happened. And then, my, again, my life got shook up. I, I, my family was okay. But just seeing the devastation and seeing the suffering from people in Puerto Rico and seeing my little island, the place that I grew up, even the town from my grandmother, she's from Guayama, and my family is usually from the west of the island, and seeing how little ancianos, they're, they're without a roof, they're sick, there's people, there's veterans that are suffering, that um, are disabled, and just seeing everything, it just broke my heart, and I just felt like, I gotta get out of Arizona. My fellow instinct was to get on a plane and go, and my brother is like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you know, you have a home, you have a thing, if you want to do something, do it some other way, but you, you can't just drop your life and leave. And I said, well, yeah, I can't do that, it's my life. Um, and so my brother was like very good about calming me, but he was very anguishing to see that. 
And then I saw an article on the newspaper about this organization at World Puerto Rican Center, and I said, there are Puerto Ricans in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started looking in the internet, and that's how I ended up here. And I remember coming to the first meeting and meeting Gretchen, um, and I was scared to death because I didn't know what to expect. I, I thought maybe they're not going to receive me very well. Maybe they're going to be like, ugh. Oh another girl coming into the Puerto Rican organization. But no, it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, people were great, they were very welcoming, and I said, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be in Puerto Rico, I'm supposed to be here. And then, obviously I said, I wanna do something, not only for the community here and the people that come here, but also for people in Puerto Rico. And, and that's part of the reason why I'm running, is because I wanna be able to contribute in that way where we're here, yes, we're doing something for our pe people that come here and offering them services, education, and the support that I didn't have when I first moved here and, and felt very scary and uh, depressing at many times. Um, and to be able to, to be that source for those people and say, hey, you, we, we're here, we're gonna embrace you, we're gonna help you, we're gonna hold your hand. We've been there too, as well, just like you've been. We came here, <laughs> we didn't know anybody, most of us. Um, and I want to be able to do that. And if you don't elect me, that's, that's okay. Um, I still want to be involved. Um, I want to, I talked to Carmen Sita and I talked to you the last time to, to Gretchen and I told her, I said, we got to do something about putting a group together and going to Puerto Rico and maybe doing trips over there and helping people, you know, build their houses or, or, or help them out uh, because they need it. Uh, every time that I see the news, it's, it's depressing to me to see the things that are happening in the government and how many people are getting left behind and how people are living and they're hopeless and, and it's just very sad. And so um, I'm very passionate about that. Um, I grew up in a family where my dad was an activist and he was a uh, leader of a la uh, labor union. So I, I have that on my blood and, and instead of getting angry, I said, you know what, I'm gonna channel that energy and put it to good use and this is why I'm here today. Okay. Yeah. Muchas gracias a Pablo Abel. Uh, correspondería el turno a Lidia Stuart, pero también la vamos a skip. Uh, ya todos saben quién es ella, así que. Y ahora corresponde el turno a Chantra Colón. My name is Shrana Colón. I'm the mother of seven beautiful teenagers or young adults. Three are biological. I have a wonderful, supportive partner as well. I was born in Pati I was born in Guayama, Puerto Rico. I'm from Patillas. Like many of you have mentioned, like our culture and how our kids are losing it, I'm one of those. I moved here at the age of eight, and Phoenix has been my home ever since. My parents split shortly after, and my father moved back to Puerto Rico in 1997, where he resides today. Even though I've been here for so long, um, I miss the smell of Abuelita Sobon. I miss every flavor you can think of. She made lingue out of it. <laughs> I miss my summers, fiesta patronales with my cousins. And as many of you can reflect on your younger days, I miss living the life without a care in the world. I was chatty, Tito's daughter. I miss these moments of our culture, something we desperately need, something my children need. I see the center evolving into something so much more and becoming the foundation for our people. I am a huge activist. I am a huge advocate of human kindness and social justice. I am a, a domestic violence advocate and survivor. I mention this because for the last five years, I've evolved into a person. Instead of letting into a better person, instead of letting this, instead of letting something so traumatic bring me down, I choose to lift. I choose to let it lift me up to help others. It was a journey. It still is, and at times I have faced some uncertainties. I, have, I am a determined individual. individual. I believe in second chances, and I'm not letting this opportunity to achieve greatness pass me by. I met Nydia Stewart about seven years ago in a Zumba class. Brief conversations, high and by. Four years later, 
our paths crossed again. I was one of the coordinators at a domestic violence fashion show and she was a model. All the women participated in various workshops. One stands out. One was about self-confidence. I remember sitting down that Sunday afternoon at a table where she joined me. I will never forget the words we shared during this one exercise. I told Nydia I appreciated her, her humbleness and I saw her heart and her passion for helping others. Her response to me surprised me. She called me a leader. At the time, I didn't grasp what she meant or how she could see this quality. On September 20th of last year, I woke up like many of you to, a hor to the horrible news of Hurricane Maria, how she wrecked havoc on our beloved Puerto Rico. I remember my passion, remembering my passion for helping others has grown. I immediately went into two modes of thinking, panic for my father and serving. How can I help? Confusion about what was going on during the storm made the concern for my father grow. I talked to this man on a regular basis. Was he okay? Is he alive? When I couldn't immediately get the answers I wanted, I turned to Nydia. Tears and crying over the phone at first until we pulled ourselves together and found, and found a plan to serve others. We decided to call the people in our community and in similar situations, loved ones in Puerto Rico, who had loved ones in Puerto Rico. We arranged a meeting at the Puerto Rican Latin Grill for the, for the following Monday to create a plan to help our beloved, Puerto, our beloved island. In 10 days time, a couple of friends and one meeting in Phoenix, in the Phoenix area, showed its love for Puerto Rico. So many people, local businesses, friends, friends of friends, took their time to assist the cause. Community members donated their time, money, and supplies. Local businesses became drop-off centers. We found people, companies, who donated their semi-trucks and their time, their gas, to haul these supplies to Florida. Questmark generously offered their space to store our supplies for the remaining four months. Who knew we could be, who knew we became relief organizers, professional movers, event planners, negotiators, spokespersons, <laughs> and the list goes on and on. We have done it all. Um, Hurricane Maria woke us up. I've never seen in 30 years so many Puerto Ricans come out. <laughs> and this is a bad analogy, but seriously, that warehouse, it, like when you turn on the lights in New York and the road goes, it's like, <laughs> bad analogy, but that's what it was. <laughs> Hundreds of people showed up. Um, I'm excited to be, I'm excited to be a part of it. Wait, sorry. Although the center has been around for 10 plus years, I'm excited to be around at this specific moment. It still is a grass, grassroots organization which has potential to cultivate the amaz an amazing organization for years to come. Keeping our Puerto Rican culture alive here in Arizona is one of my deepest passions for myself, for my children, and we deserve it. Arizona is lacking the culture, but more importantly, more importantly our children are. Our ancestors deserve this. My grandmother deserves this. So does yours. I believe in our various passions, and any one of us will make this work. Everything happens for a reason. Everything has its time and its purpose. Everything will come and will follow. I stand here today humbled with the hope that I may say I that I may be able to fill the role she, Nidia, envisioned in me four years ago. Muchas gracias, Chandra. 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 Ahora llega el momento crucial de esta asamblea, que es la votación. Uh, tenemos que nuevamente recalcar, eh, como no tuvimos quórum, 
tenemos que hacer la votación ahora, pero esas papeletas se reservan pa, hasta el momento en que las personas que van a hacerlo online eh, voten y entonces se cuentan todos los, los votos y se elige la nueva directiva. Esta directiva tiene una, un, un compromiso bien fuerte. Este, como dijo Chandra y Chanda y, y los demás candidatos, tenemos que empezar a, a fomentar esa cultura. Y con la excusa de que le podemos enseñar a nuestros nietos y a nuestros hijos, pues nosotros también aprender lo que es la cultura puertorriqueña. Que los niños aprendan a jugar peregrina, a jugar chico paralizado, a jugar villalta, a la cebollita, la cebollita todo ese tipo de juegos que ahora muchos de ellos la, la han abandonado porque eh, tienen sus juegos electrónicos, ¿no? pero que nosotros podemos enseñarles y podemos recordar todo eso que es Puerto Rico. Ah, como mencionó alguien, hacer pasteles, hacer eh, comidas criollas, arroz con gandules, eh, todo eso es Puerto Rico y todo eso es a lo que esta nueva Junta tiene eh, que dirigir sus esfuerzos. Me lanzo un reto a la nueva Junta, una de las candidatas me había dicho de esta idea, eh, yo se lo había propuesto a, a, a la organización, que en noviembre es la semana puertorriqueña y nosotros como organización tenemos que hacernos sentir en esa semana. Tenemos que empezar a organizar y esta Junta debe hacerlo desde ahora, empezar a organizar este, eso, esos eventos para esa semana, para conmemorar esa semana que es la Semana de Puerto Rico. Y eh, el otro reto que tienen es de que los que salgan electos y los que no salgan electos tienen el compromiso de ayudar a la organización. Fuera de la Junta va a haber unos comités que son bien importantes. El comité de fundraising es bien importante para la organización. El comité de asuntos culturales, el comité de finanzas, todos esos grupos son importantes y aquellos que no resultan electos en la, en la Junta pueden participar en esos comités. Así que les exhorto a todos a votar, a votar conscientemente. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta para alguno de los candidatos, la puede hacer ahora. Si no, pues sometemos a la Asamblea a la votación. No hay preguntas, pues vamos a la votación. Okay. Pueden votar y depositar en la urna. Yo tengo que ir a votar. La parte posterior. Esa es la puerta. Si esa es la puerta, que nadie se vaya. Agradecemos nuevamente a nuestro auspiciador salvadoreño Restaurant, que está en la avenida central, North Central Avenue, en Phoenix. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Miguel Mambo de Leon. And uh, first I want to thank of all the candidates for super special. And I know the board, uh, it's, going to, it's going to be a really good board moving forward. Um, I'm working with um, Ricardo and we are doing the Puerto Rican Festival this year, which is happening October 13th. And um, uh, I'm new, so a lot of folks don't know me. They just know I do music and then I'm a knucklehead. I, those are true. Saben que soy músico, eso es medio loquito, eso son cosas que son verdad. Pero otra cosa es, también lo veo primeramente en la comunidad. My first thing is for the community. Entonces, um, como no tengo mala sangre aquí, tampoco va a empezar. Since I don't have any bad blood around here, I'm not going to start either. So ya hablé con varias gente, no va a haber otro festival. La, ya hablé con Lalo, con Carlos y esa gente. No va a haber otra fiesta, lo va a dejar que el, el 13 de octubre se tiene para que el Puerto Rico Center y la festival de Puerto Rico se pueda presentar tal como una comunidad unido. ¿Ok? Entonces, en eso, trabajando con, la, con el Puerto Rico Center, um, con, para los miembros, les vamos a estar pasando también información 
uh, luego ahí con ellos vamos a estar hablando ellos de ahí ellos pueden enviar la información para que sepan lo que viene por ahí para que participen también en el festival ok one more thing real quick just so you guys know uh, that both Ricardo and Miguel are members of the center and Ricardo has invited the Puerto Rican Center to take care of the cultural part of the festival. So all of you as members, we will need volunteers and we're gonna need your help. Anything, if you know anybody that's artesano, that knows anything related to Puerto Rico or anything that can be presented at the festival for cultural aspect of it, please reach out to these people and let us know because aside from, they're gonna take care of the entertainment and everything else, but we are there to represent the culture, to represent, uh, we have uh, Sulema Rodriguez is gonna represent the voting block. They're gonna be taking, uh, people, registering people to vote. We're gonna do a number of things to put our community out there, visible, up there. They're gonna know, and this is in downtown Glendale. This is a huge place. This is a, you know, where the, the glitter lights happens every year. This is a prime, prime place. And Glendale is notorious for inviting the entire city to their any event that's happening. So they're gonna promote the festival big. There's gonna be a lot of people there. So this is our time to shine at this festival. Yeah. Yeah. Before I before we leave and we end the meeting today, um, I know there's a few of you that have served this country and I would like to acknowledge you. So please come on up because you know who you are. I just want to say thank you. So come on. Where's so I I have also served this country for eight years, and I want to acknowledge Kinalis and Leticia for serving this country. Puerto Ricans. We are Puerto Ricans and we have served this country, so it is an honor to have them. And there's many more, we're going to honor them as well. Yes. Yes.